I've never been more scared than kayak in my life. Yeah, he's screaming. All right, guys, we just had somebody right here strip fishing. Blaine's getting a run right now, but somebody is out here in a kayak and they are screaming. <laughs> so I'm gonna go out here and try to help them. What is going on, Gulf Coast Nation? Guys, welcome home. For those of you who are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. We do videos every single Monday and Friday, but today, we are in beautiful Navarre Beach, Florida, as you can see behind us. Sunny, high pressure, no clouds, flat waves, clear water, everything for a successful charter fishing night. We have our clients coming here in just a second. Blaine and I are getting the rod set up. He's got some fresh bait right here. So we're gonna get the rod set up, all the baits out like normal. Then we're gonna get after some big off sharks. Let's do it. Yo! Early pickup, number one. Yeah, that's a fish for sure. It's not a big bait. What are we at? 152. He's eating it down. Sticking, baby, sticking, baby, sticking, baby, sticking, baby, sticking. Boom, there it is. Get to him, switch in. All right, y'all, crazy. There it is, baby. Let's go. The air shark fishing will wide. She's already repping it. That's all we're catching so early. She brought the hammerhead shirt. Beat him up. Beat him up. You want it, man? Come here, man. Oh, we got speed? Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to breathe sometimes, man. When you're all excited, I might be crossing back over here, Blaine. I'm not sure. It's all right. We'll just keep an eye on it, man. You got it. <laughs> Guys. He's right there. Woo! Leader! He's a little fired up. Keep reeling, keep reeling. He's got a big section of this leader wrapped up. Sandbar. D hooker. That's leader out of him first so he don't get tangled up in him. <clears throat> Hooks out. All right, take that leader with you. Thank you for grabbing that. Sandball right here guys, we're gonna walk with him. Make sure he's good to go, he seems pretty fired up. Pretty exciting birthday boy just got here. And he's already on his first shark. She looks ready to go. There she goes, baby. There she goes, baby. How's that for an early start? Let's oh, yeah. go, man. Let's do Let's it. Go. We won't. But I'm back on the weight now. Yeah, it's eating it right now. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah, back on the weight. He still wants to. Yeah. Yeah, he's screaming. Don't. Yeah, he's screaming. Don't worry about that. Where's it at? Oh, 
I see his light. Yeah, there's his light right there. Where's it at? He's out, he's out straight in front. I don't know. All right, guys, we just had somebody right here strip fishing. Blaine's getting a run right now, but somebody is out here in a kayak and they are screaming. <laughs> so I'm gonna go out here and try to help them. I'm, 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 is he yeah. on the phone with somebody? No, I don't think so. Oh yeah, that's a shot. He's way out here, guys. Can I? Yeah. Come here. Come here. Really? Really? Before we hit the outro, I wanted to talk to you guys kind of a little bit more in depth about that whole kayaking situation. So right on the beach, it's about 10 o'clock. We're hanging out with clients. We caught that one sandball around sundown. And then we heard some yelling coming from around the area. Um, I thought it was coming up from the condos, but we had noticed a guy a little after you know sunset that had gone out in his kayak way out into the gulf. And we were just kind of like, man, it's kind of weird. I don't know if he's like shark fishing out of his kayak or if he's just like, I don't know, enjoying it or whatever. It was a really flat day, um, almost little to no winds completely. And we just found it odd. And then when we heard somebody yelling, someone had said, like, I think it's coming from that guy in the kayak. So we all kind of walked down to the water to listen. Um, all of a sudden, the reel starts screaming like you guys saw. And um, right when the reel started going off, we did hear him yell like very clearly, you know, help me, like a big really just like make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. And so I was like, oh my gosh, Blaine, you handle the reel. I'm gonna jump on the kayak and go see if I can help this guy. So I jump on the kayak, as you guys saw, um, I start taking off. I don't wanna share any of the video from getting close to this guy um, because I don't feel it's very appropriate to you know share somebody obviously in a weak moment or whatever the situation was. Um, that's kind of their personal deal. And so there's a fine line as, you know, influencers and um, video makers like ourselves where you want to get good content to share entertaining things with you guys. But I also don't want to cross a line of personal, you know, space or personal boundaries with somebody else. 
And so um, this individual, I jumped in the kayak. He was like 1,500 yards out there, way, way out there. And about halfway out there, I hadn't heard him, you know, cry for help again. And my thoughts started rolling a little bit. You know, they're catching the shark back there. And I'm thinking, you know, what if this guy's intentions aren't pure? Like, what if he's trying to lure me out there, lure somebody out there, you know, to not get help, but, you know, maybe cause harm? I didn't know. So my mind starts kind of running halfway out there. So I stop. Like I said, no winds, flat day. The moon was pretty decent. It was semi-visible out there. And I could kind of see where his headlamp was, but I was like, you know what? I've got to make sure this dude's like actually needing help because I just hadn't heard him in a while. I've been paddling for 800 yards now. And then after about five seconds of stopping, I heard him clear as day again, just help me, a pure scream for help, cry for help. And so I was like, the heck with it. Screw it, I'm going. Double timed on my kayak, got out there close to him. I get within 50 yards of this guy. He has his headlamp on. I have my chest mount GoPro light on as well as a headlamp on. So I'm completely visible to him. And when I get about 50 yards from him, again, with these thoughts that have already ran through my head, he cuts his headlamp out. So he goes completely dark. And I have my lights on. And I was like, hey, man, like if you need help, like I need you to put your headlamp on so I know where you are. Nothing. Like I said, no wind, flat, 100%, 50 yards away. He could hear me because I could hear his paddle strokes. And I was like, oh, crap. Like I got caught. My fear was right. I feel like this guy's out here to get somebody. And so I started kind of going into my defense mode. I cut both of my lights off. I couldn't see him great. So I kind of ducked down to put his like outline with the horizon. And I see him coming like directly at me. And I thought, all right, like here we go. This is not going to be good. Um, and the guy comes close. And I'm like, I kind of fired up at this point, right? So I'm like, hey, man, like, if you, if you need help out here, like you're freaking crying for help. I'm out of here. Like what? Like what do you? Like why are you talking to me? Kind of thing. And he's paddling right at me, and he just goes, "Get the heck away from me!" Like real aggressive. And I was like, "What do you mean? Like you asked for help? I'm here. We're 1,500 yards from shore. We're the only two people in these kayaks. Like I'm here to help you." And he was like, "Get the heck away from me!" Like real aggressive. Again, no plea, no signs of like him being hurt. He's upright. He's paddling. And so I was like, look, it's only me and him out there. I can't help this guy. Obviously, he's now communicating that he doesn't want help, and I want to make it back home to my family and friends tonight. So I was like, nope, you said you don't want help? No problem, man. Like, I'm out. So I turned around, double-timed. Good thing I had that Cobra kayak because those Cobras are fast. I beat him back to the beach. Um, the guys had already leaded the fish. It was a nice five-and-a-half-foot sandbar. Sorry we didn't get the video um, of that, given the situation, I had taken the chest mount with me and stuff. So he ends up going like 500 yards down to the east in front of a big condo there in Navarre. He gets to the beach. People are shining their headlamps. Kind of when he gets there, the clients were like, hey, should we go down there and like help the guy? And I was like, look, like the guy told me he didn't want my help. Like He told me to get away from him. So I think for your safety, for my safety, for I don't know what like what this guy is dealing with, but he doesn't want help, so I'm not going to go down there and help you and help him, and I don't want you guys to go help him and put yourselves in harm's way. There was kids in the group and that kind of stuff, so we decided to just leave it alone. About 30, 45 minutes later, an ambulance did show up down there. They were there for about an hour and a half. Um, I'm not sure the whole story. I don't know the outcome. I didn't check any police reports or anything like that. Um, the guy wasn't obviously in physical pain. He didn't break anything. He didn't stick himself with a hook. He didn't get bit. Um, I'm assuming it was some sort of I don't know if he went out there, had a panic attack or maybe cardiac arrest or something. I don't know. And started freaking out, panicking, felt like he couldn't get back. By the time I already got out there, he had handled it. And maybe he was embarrassed that he cried for help. Um, and then when he got back to shore, maybe family and friends were like, hey, man, let's, let's call an ambulance if your heart's, I don't know. I don't know. We can speculate as long as we want. Bottom line was, is, um, you know, I don't want to share the video of him getting closer. I don't want him to feel put out. But um, that's kind of the basics of what, what happened there. It was an interesting night. It's something different, right? So, like, if you guys are out there and hear something like that, just be aware um, that, you know, not everybody's intentions are pure nowadays, unfortunately. So help when you can, but also make sure that you're going to make it home to your friends and family. So that's basically the whole kayak situation, the whole backstory there. So I'm going to cut you guys to the outro. Outro. Alrighty guys, back in the truck now, everything is packed up, 
what an interesting trip. I cannot believe that, you know, eight years of shark fishing, two years of doing charters, a little over two years now, almost three, that we have not had, you know, just a night like tonight. But I'm telling you, that whole kayak situation. So weird. That was so weird. weird. I honestly, I've never been more scared than kayak in my life. I'm not scared of sharks. I'm more scared of humans, especially in the kayak, especially at night, mm -hmm. out alone. That was that was just weird. So, anyways, we got some sharks. We had some interesting events occur, and um, look, we got it done at the end of the day. The clients were happy. Their, you know, nephew and son got on sharks. Okay, it was their mm -hmm. birthday, so we got it done. A couple sandbar sharks, super super fun, and the clients had a good time. Catch you guys next week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment below. Share it with your friends. And as always, we'll catch you guys in just a couple days. Let's do it. Woo!